presentation is about role models and uh, good examples in uh, kindergarten school. Uh, I am an educational coordinator for early childhood, and um, I will. Uh, okay, uh, so I will uh, begin with um, first. Uh, part of uh, my presentation, which uh, has to do with the STEAM and uh, some innovative uh, pedagogies. Um, uh, for example, the introduction of STEM in education started from the need for student literacy in STEM fields of knowledge in such a way that they choose careers related to these uh, disciplines. The introduction of STEM education in recent years uh, with educational practices and um, the cross-linking of uh, scientific fields and uh, the prospect that creates for the future has a significant impact uh, on the uh, restructuring of both uh, educational systems and uh, applied educational approaches. Um, how about the STEM in education? Uh, first of all, STEM, uh, the STEM approach is an interdisciplinary approach to education that breaks down traditional barriers between subjects and disciplines in order to link STEM to digital uh, technology education. STEM with arts, uh, STEM activities to the arts, humanities and social sciences, STEM and STEM. The STEM approach uh, constitutes an interdisciplinary approach to education which uh, breaks down traditional barriers and, of course, STEM activities to the arts, humanities and social science. And finally, STEM and STEAM, critical sorters in skills, enterprises, innovation and creativity. Um, now, uh, the application of the STEM approach uh, in education as an innovative uh, element invo involves not only the um, interconnection of subjects, but also the educational approaches that are implemented. A number of uh, pedagogical approaches between disciplinary based learning uh, and um, approaches. Uh, for example, there are many. Uh, for example, uh, let's start uh, with uh, focusing on uh, truly authentic problems. Um, uh, when we talk about uh, focusing on truly authentic problems, um, students have uh, the opportunities to make connections between subjects and develop problem solving, uh, critical thinking skills, including research, uh, hypothesis te testing, analysis, synthesis, and stro uh, strong abstract uh, reasoning for achieving a uh, solution to real problems. For example, uh, how can we prevent waste in our school community? Or how can we use materials to collect water? Uh, the second um, collaborative uh, pedagogical process is setting a design activity at the beginning or uh, at the end of a task. Uh, for example, um, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, collaborative uh, uh, process has to do uh, with what can I do with um, uh, how can I make a catapult, how can I make uh, some art crafts, or for example, uh, how can I uh, make an um, Eiffel Tower. Uh, these examples are fun STEM uh, lessons and uh, they are combining excellent uh, motor skills and engineering, practicing, of course, maths and creativity. Another, uh, another collaborative inquiry based uh, pedagogical process is uh, problem based learning. Uh, and uh, this is based on, uh, con uh, on conduction of uh, research and application of knowledge. Uh, this uh, problem based learning is the choice of, an, uh, it starts from a choice of open ending uh, problems and the available support in guiding the learning uh, process and informing at the end of the learning. Um, experience. For example, um, how can uh, I um, uh, have this uh, cup uh, to be stable? This is um, a problem-based learning and uh, students can um, uh, solve this. Or a uh, challenge-based learning. Challenge-based learning is an active methodology in which learners uh, choose uh, a challenge or problem from the real world, um, a goal that will help them to promote the solution of this problem. As in problem-based learning that uh, we uh, talked about uh, before, so in challenge-based learning, there is a final product, although this uh, product is defined in the process rather than in the beginning. Um, 
in, in Charles uh, Institute, uh, the Charles based learning framework uh, consists of uh, these three steps uh, engage, investigate, and finally act. Another uh, collaborative uh, pedagogical process is the project uh, inquiry based learning, similar to the project uh, uh, to the problem based learning. And um, the role of the educator here is very uh, important. He is a provider of information, is stronger, and um, the learner's role is setting the goals and uh, parameters uh, to, in, uh, to, uh, to solve this problem. For example, research on uh, germination where according to this stream lesson plan, uh, kindergarten students become explorers. Uh, we also uh, observe the plan, how it grows in the dark, and of course, um, how it uh, grows in the light. Uh, finally, the thinking-based learning is an active methodology that allows students to think and reason by themselves, also creating their own learning. Uh, according to um, uh, Swartz, uh, pupils will not only be trained to learn knowledge, but they will also uh, the, the educator to become uh, good thinkers. Finally, design thinking. Uh, design thinking is offering a thinking scheme capable of uh, generating uh, solutions by introducing a human perspective. Uh, design thinking has uh, five phases. Uh, the first phase has to do uh, with um, the emphasize. The first phase consists understanding the problem and um, in an empathic, empathetic way. The second phase has to do with the divine the problem. The third phase has to do with the generate ideas. A uh, fourth phase has to do with creating or prototyping a product. And uh, finally, the fifth phase uh, consists of testing the final product. So, uh, regarding the integration of STEM education, research reports benefits such as, uh, such as improved problem solving by students, innovation and uh, ingenuity, uh, rational thinking and techn uh, technological literacy. Studies have shown that the, the integration of mathematics and science has a positive effect on students' behavior and interest in school, on motivation to learn. With all the potential benefits of integrated STEM education, it's important to identify how educators can teach effectively while teachers support issues, teaching practices, teacher effectiveness and materials required to implement an integrated STEM program are vital and should be considered. Uh, what are the basic steps uh, of STEM methodology? Uh, the basic steps uh, for this uh, methodology is observe, ask, collect, imagine, plan, create, and improve. And of course, all uh, these uh, questions. Uh, for example, observe what is the problem or who can help me solve this problem. To collect is what information will I need to solve this problem? Uh, this problem. Imagine is how can I solve the problem? Plan it has to do with what materials do I have or do I need? Create is I will test my plan and improve. It uh, has to do with I will reflect on my design. Uh, the most important in STEM methodology is questioning. And uh, it's not the answer that enlightens, but the question. The value, so the value of questioning is a central strategy for the teaching of science. And uh, it has to do with uh, how can we implement students to uh, ask and uh, to solve problems. Uh, the KWLH structured teaching strategy which is a useful tool uh, for the teacher to lead uh, the students in questioning and an obvious way to encourage and simulate questions from them. Um, and here are, um, at this point, I would like to emphasize that uh, through, through uh, relevant research, it has been uh, shown that the kindergarten children can infer causal relationships from data and demonstrate scientific thinking ability while playing a, an important role in cultivating the skill of developing a question. 
for example, what do I know already or how do I want to find out what have I learned and how will I learn more? Uh, the second part of this presentation has to do with um, how can we uh, role models, how, we, how can we create a gender-neutral learning environment. First of all, we can build linguistic, spatial and number skills from an early age. Linguistic, uh, spatial and number skills strongly predict later achievement in STEM. As with other cognitive abilities, these skills are flexible and highly influenced by instruction and practice and can be significantly uh, improved through early experiences. Uh, other one is implementing STEAM workshops from kindergarten for boys and girls, adjusting the content to the different educational levels. Here you can see some um, uh, expertise, some uh, achievement uh, with uh, the students. And uh, how can, uh, what can we do more? We can um, uh, develop positive STEM identities. For example, girls need support to develop positive math, science, and ISD identities, belief in their abilities, and the sense of belonging in STEM studies and therefore careers. This can be done by increasing girls' exposure to STEM experiences. Even brief interaction have been found to shape student beliefs about their potential for success in STEM. For example, um, drop of line coding, mathematics, or uh, IST with uh, computers and um, uh, teamwork. Um, another uh, suggestion is um, to give and to offer role models in early age. Girls and young women uh, find it difficult to imagine themselves in STEM roles. Seeing women working in STEM fields and technology helps remind girls that they have a place in these fields if, of course, they want to. For example, uh, books that uh, has to do with the role models. I dream to be um, an engineer. Uh, of course, another suggestion is how can we Skype with a scientist? How can, uh, how can we um, learn about um, the profession of electric engineering? Another suggestion has to do um, how can we create enthusiasm? Like uh, Andrea said before, uh, girls want to be creative and have a positive impact on the world. Many girls, young women, may not realize that STEM and a career in computer science can give, the, give them uh, exactly the opportunities they are looking for. So uh, we can uh, do uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, activities that um, is very enthusiastic. We can also encourage a growth mindset. Girls and young women are willing to work hard to succeed. So environments must be created where, where question, discovery, and even failure are treated as positive elements of the learning process. And of course, we have to provide encouragement. Girls who feel supported by educators, by teachers and parents show more interest in uh, continuing their education in the STEM field in the future. And uh, last and very important is the parental engagement. Parental engagement and activities to extend school learning is very important into the home and other, of course, settings can also be, uh, be promoted. The influence of family and friends on uh, what activities girls engage in, more awareness raising needed uh, within the home. Um, very important also is uh, the role of teacher who guides, who encourages, who leads uh, to questions uh, the students, who accepts and, of course, who helps, uh, helps and facilitates. And finally, um, we empower students to believe in their ability to realize their dreams uh, regardless of their gender identity and that their, their gender is a strength and never a weakness. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful presentation and definitely gave us a lot to think about. I was really impressed, um, obviously thinking down the, the younger end of the education system, 
um, the way that they're, they're still engaging in inquiry processes. They're still engaging in the same kind of cycle as they will do as they progress up the schools. So you gave the example there where they're engaging, they're investigating, and then they're acting um, to, to, to kind of find solutions to real life problems. And that's exactly what they're going to be doing going forward as they go into secondary school and, and hopefully on to university. Um, so it really is uh, um, enlightening. What I would um, wonder if you could maybe expand a little bit on is what, how do you see the parents? I know you were saying engage at home, but in in what way do you think that a parent could or parents together perhaps help a, a class of kindergarten children? Is there any kind of suggestions that you would have for any kindergarten mm -hmm. or early years teachers that are out there? I think that's uh, very important to uh, build bridges, bridge about um, between uh, school and uh, family. So um, I usually say and uh, propose to Guido County teachers to uh, have some common um, uh, activities with school and uh, family uh, and engage uh, children in uh, STEM activities together. Uh, there is an opportunity that we can uh, um, uh, evaluate and that we can uh, do uh, between uh, family and uh, kindergarten. And it is very important to um, have this opportunity in kindergarten because it's the first school for children and it's very important. Of course. And once you have that grounding there at the early age and they see how the adults engage with the children and that they're engaging with the, the, the STEM or the STEAM project, that that will inspire them to continue on as they go through um, the education system. And, and it's not, as you were saying, it's gender neutral. It, it makes no difference. It's the same kind of approach for both boys and girls. The one thing that kind of came to my mind there when you were saying about things that they can do at home that they also do in school is things like school gardens. And um, so they can have their little vegetable plot. And again, that's that that will tie into so many different areas of the curriculum as well. Um, mm -hmm. So of course, outdoor activities, many outdoor activities. They, they can do a lot of uh, outdoor activities. And of course, uh, all of uh, these STEM disciplines can um, do in these activities. They all tie into each other. And I think that's what mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to, to show them from a younger age. And, and yes, when they get older, they may like to specialize in one. But again, they're, they're working as teams. And then at the younger age, uh, like age group it's so important they they often have that it's mine and I'm doing this and it's it's all those skills that they're they're learning about cooperation and collaboration mm -hmm. communication the opportunities to develop language as well is 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 endless it mm -hmm. really is is a fantastic opportunity um we've got lots of great comments coming in on the the chat as well um the other thing I was just wondering, um, is there any particular um, kind of approach that you would recommend taking? Like, I know you were you were saying that there were the different types of inquiry processes, like some of them only had like three stages, some of them have five stages, others will go on to having seven, eight. Um, and obviously it is a cycle. So the children are kind of going through each each round and changing mm -hmm. things. But is there like would you would you say at a particular age that they should stick with maybe less number of steps or do you think that it depends on the scenario? I think it depends of uh, from scenario uh, scenario. It's uh, very important what um, scenario we'll choose to do with our students, um, and of course uh, the main thing and, and important thing is question question to ask questions and um, uh, the skill of questioning is very important how can we uh, make a question to our students to our pupils it's very important uh, to questioning and of course to answer with uh, this guidance from <laughs> educators but not only that i think at the younger level in kindergarten the children are, are, are more eager to ask questions for yes. us so <laughs> they tend to come up with the questions rather than the very educator important. being the one to present it mm -hmm. and i think it's to be open to the children and um, coming up with the idea of what is that like this is the starting point and going from there and saying okay i really you know that that's something i don't know even if you do know the answer 
to say, oh, I don't know the answer to that. Let's go and investigate it. And I think I think that's the key for a younger a younger level.